Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan. And today we are talking about what are the three most important things for a person to be happy. Let's talk about that. So Donovan, what would you say is on your list of top three important things to be happy? Yeah, I think this is an interesting topic just because we've covered so many things that it might be hard to sort of like hone in on what are mm-hmm. like top priorities for people. Like what are the what right. are the most important things? And obviously there's going to be some flexibility for what actually works for people, but mm-hmm. there, there are probably a few things that generally are the first things worth tackling. So I'll give you my opinion and we'll see if it matches up with what you think. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, um, is sort of your relationship with events, right? Like the way that you just like process the world around you, like your mindsets, those types of things, I think are the most important because you have the absolute most control over that. Like the way that you, um, you know, if someone, we've talked about this a billion times, but if somebody cuts you off in traffic or if somebody yells at you, or if, if something bad happens, the way that you process and relate with that event, mm-hmm. um, I think there's tons of ground to be made there for the vast majority of people. Second, um, and this the, these three are all like sort of tied. I don't I don't know that they're rank ordered <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. But second, I would say probably relationships, right? Because the the quality there's there's just like so much research out there that the quality of your relationships and interactions is such a huge predictor. Of happiness. Now it looks different for different people, right? It's like mm-hmm. if you're way more on the extroverted side, you may need to like interact with a lot of different people um, to feel fully fulfilled and whatever. But at the core, you know, having good, strong quality relationships is a, a huge predictor and driver of happiness. And I've definitely seen that like personally, but I think uh, there's plenty of research to also show that that is backed up. The third thing I will say, and this is where this is where maybe things start to get a little bit more debatable, but I would say um, sort of your health, right? And, and like by that I mean your physical health. Mm-hmm. Um, and and this is where like I don't know, but for me, I know that if I don't take care of my body, my mind and my happiness actually suffers mm-hmm. quite quickly thereafter, right? Yeah. So this one's like a little bit of, I mean, they're all sort of a little bit of cheater buckets because like so much stuff falls under this. Like this is like diet, exercise, and sleep uh, are probably like the the main components underneath there. But there was a very long time in my life where I didn't necessarily pay attention to my health or mm-hmm. I wouldn't recognize sort of the link between, oh, I'm really pissed off today. And hey, I slept two hours last night. Or like, hey, I went out drinking last night and, mm-hmm. uh, or, hey, like I haven't eaten all day. Um, yeah. And I feel like over time I've gotten a little bit better at sort of linking like, oh, actually a lot of my emotional state and uh, happiness is influenced heavily by sort of these other physical states. Mm-hmm. So that's my first pass at it. I'm curious where you agree, disagree. What else you got? Yeah, they're like the first three things that came to my mind, there's some overlap and then some I didn't think of, but I'm thinking, yeah, that is kind of important. <laughs> so <laughs> can I really limit it to three? I don't, I don't know. But I mean, what popped into my head first was connection, which is similar to your second one with relationships. Cause I think it's essential for humans in particular to have connections with other people or relationships with other to feel happy because I think of, you know, what's one of the like worst forms of torture that they, when prisoners are, are bad, they're put in isolation and that's like, that's torture basically, um, to, to have to be in isolation, maybe not for everyone, but I think even if, even if you were like the biggest introvert in the world, I think at a certain point, you know, I don't know if it's two weeks or a month you'd reach like a breaking point where you'd love to have an interaction with another human being. Um, 
So yeah, definitely that was at the top of my list. The second one, I guess that came to my mind was purpose and having direction or um, not necessarily like purpose as far as a career goes, but just like feeling like your life has meaning or purpose, whether that's like raising a child or a dog (laughs) or or doing something that fulfills you, giving giving you some sort of sense of fulfillment and happiness in that sense. Um, and I guess like I hadn't thought of my third thing, but the first thing you talked about, which was mindset or to some degree, I was kind of like going in um, agreement with. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just make that my third, <laughs> third, third item because, yeah, that is really important. But just to take it a step further, I would say, like, um, yeah, that's something that I think is can be developed with time. It's not necessarily automatic. Not everyone just magically has it, like the mindset, or maybe a lot of people do. Or, you know, maybe some people are more prone to have a happier mindset than others. But I think even if you're not you can, you can develop yourself in that area. And that's where I think, you know, it kind of intermixes with um, personal development. I think the more that I've done personally has expanded my happiness in a lot of different ways, but you really made a good point about health, which I did want to touch on because yeah, if I don't have my routines that manage my health, like my exercise routine and what I eat, then like, I feel like everything goes downhill. So, but then I'm like, oh, would I also throw in like the basics of living <laughs> as part of my happiness? I don't know. That That's where I was kind of debating in my head. Yeah. Well, that's why I sort of caveated it a little bit with like, this may be uh, somewhat different for people, um, but yeah. I know from, from my own experience like uh, I talked a little bit about moods and stuff but I also know like I my depression is a hundred percent tied to uh like physical yeah um attributes right like yeah if I stop exercising for two to three days mm-hmm. the chance that I'm gonna start feeling depressed is like ridiculously higher than my baseline yeah. mm-hmm so, and that's why I said, you know, that one, this one may be like weighted a little bit more towards me because I've also seen, uh, it's, it's also why I sort of like led with sort of mindset because, you know, you can find people with really crushing terminal illnesses mm-hmm. that are still perfectly happy. Yeah, um, that's true. But I also think uh, s- some number of people or like maybe, maybe just in my circles, but some number of people do not notice um the smaller more like day-to-day influences of health on their sort of mood and feelings and stuff Mm -hmm. you know when you have something like yeah huge that's life-changing like it's a little bit more like you were talking about like you have to wrestle a little bit more with like the purpose side of things and Mm -hmm. and sort of like the meaning Mm -hmm. uh side of things Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's interesting when you said connection actually i think that's maybe a better word than uh relationships for me because i feel like connection sort of you can sort of shoe in connection to people and um, right. life in general, right? Like, yeah. like yeah. sort of a, a dog, <laughs> like a different uh, mm. variant on the word purpose. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there are some people who are, I think a dog is a great example, like fairly isolated. You know, there are some people who really are pretty happy just hanging out with their dog yeah. out in the woods or like wherever. And like, <laughs> That mostly does it. So um, connection might actually be better than relationships for me. I'm going to bump that ahead. I'm going to switch them out. (laughs) Okay. You can steal (laughs) for sure. Um, But yeah, I I do agree about the the health piece because I notice a pretty big difference when I'm uh, not exercising or I mean I know I've talked about this in previous episodes but like when I did I think it was like a a morning ritual challenge where I was pretty adamant about it like literally every day even if it was just 10 minutes a day of exercise and meditation 
um, for like three weeks. And then I, I fell off the wagon because of the holidays. And I noticed a huge drop in my mood and, and I felt really depressed and I didn't put two and two together right away. <laughs> it took a while. And I, and I just was like, there's nothing bad happening in my life. I don't understand why this is going on. So I think that's a, it's a, a big one that I, I don't feel like everyone recognizes as a huge contributor to the happiness. <laughs> yeah. I think what you just mentioned around, like you didn't recognize it for a while or, or it was yeah. hard to see. Um, I think maybe this is, that's the good um, thing to think about is if like people are feeling unhappy and they can't discern why yeah. the, the things we're talking about as like the most important are really good and useful places to look. Like mm-hmm. often in, in my life and the people around me and the things I've seen, like when um, unhappiness is brewing and the source is a little confusing, it is usually one of these things. It's yeah. usually like a disconnect from some sort of sense of purpose or connection or like health things, right? Like some sort of health thing that's mm-hmm. just causing you to be down or um, this used to affect me a lot, just like patterns of mindsets or like. Mm -hmm. patterns of thinking that would sort of drag me down even when nothing was going wrong like there'd be nothing bad and it would just be like oh I don't feel good today everything sucks and it's like well I track back and I spent six hours today working on how much my life sucks in my head like Mm -hmm. that's that's bound to lead to unhappiness so uh I just want to highlight like if if people are not feeling good and not sure why these are definitely some places to to dig in on. And I found a ton of mileage out of that uh, in the past several years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The other thing I wanted to kind of delve a little deeper into was the mindset piece, because I kind of want to expand on that a little bit more, because I don't think it's quite fully comprehensive of of what, what I'm trying to get across as one of the factors for happiness. And where my brain is attempting to go is that when I think of children, generally, for the most part, I think children are happy as long as they're growing up in a healthy, a relatively healthy environment and they're getting their needs met, they're they're happy. They're kids. They get to be kids. But it's like when shit goes down and things happen and trauma and life and the suck like the baggage of life eventually accumulates and then that's when we are more likely to become depressed and like weighed down from the past but I it's not quite just mindset I think it's maybe I don't know if I want to expand it to the ability to self-reflect or maybe self-awareness um is a factor in that of just like understanding how your past and your childhood and the things that happened to you in your life influences your happiness, whether or not, or your ability to let move beyond it, whether it's processing and letting it go or whatever it looks like to be able to move past it is an important part because it's like, if you let every bad thing that's happened to you, kind of just weigh on your shoulders one after another yeah life is not gonna look too pretty yeah I think mindset is another one like when I was talking about health which is like it's sort of a cheater bucket because there's a lot of stuff jammed in there Mm -hmm. um but you, you raise a good point like there's just so many different ways that you could interpret this idea of mindset and like uh self-awareness or the ability to reflect effectively i feel like is a necessary precursor to be able to do any work in this area yeah like it's impossible to i mean maybe not impossible but very unlikely that you are going to change sort of your perceptions or the way you view the world or your interactions with certain things without being able to sort of understand your relationship from like a uh, uh, perspective outside of yourself to some degree mm-hmm. it's it's really hard to sort of we'll, we'll use like sort of the childhood influences as a as an example but it's it's really hard sometimes to sort of step back and see like the way that these events unfolded has drastically influenced how i see the world mm-hmm. and i don't have to necessarily see the world in this way yeah um 
And one of the things that I've got a, a lot of mileage out of is figuring or asking myself if something is useful, like a certain point of view or a way of thinking or a way of looking at things is useful because a lot of times stuff that I've been carrying with me forever because of the way I was raised or because of things that happened to me as a kid. If I am able to be self-reflective enough and conscious enough and aware enough of it being just uh, an opinion that I'm, that I have instead of like, this is how the world is. There's so many times that those mindsets that I've been carrying for so long are not useful. Yeah. They might be familiar. They might be comfortable, but they're not necessarily useful. And starting to unravel some of those things has helped me make a lot of progress in terms of being able to process different events in ways that, either increases my happiness or at least doesn't increase my unhappiness yeah definitely valuable points that you made i kind of wanted to explore relationships and connection a little bit deeper and why that's so important to happiness um yeah do you want to kind of expand on that a little more (laughs) sure yeah i can lead off and then i have a question for you um so the reason i think connection and, and relationships I'll, I'll tackle them a little bit separately but they're somewhat the same they're so important is because if you don't have a feeling like you belong to something or like that there's work worth doing or that there is some sort of interaction worth doing it is near impossible to build up any motivation to do anything and then when you when you get stuck and static and um, don't feel like you're making progress that is a very potent recipe for unhappiness Mm-hmm. Um, in, in a similar vein with relationships, sort of often, or for most people, your relationships are basically are like the quality of your relationships are the interactions that you have most often. Mm-hmm. And it is the external influence that is, or at least one of the strongest external influences you have. So for example, if you have a partner and your relationship with them is not good, you're probably going to see them, you know, or have five, 10, 15, 20 interactions with them per day, if all of them are negative, it's very hard to feel good and happy. And then if you expand that to all of your relationships, if all of your relationships are in rough spots and you have hundreds of interactions across the course of the day, then it is extremely difficult to maintain happiness just because you're having all these, you know, painful and, and, and relationships have these things in them anyway, to some degree sometimes, but like, Mm -hmm. Uh, when they're really struggling, like constant sources of pain and struggle Mm -hmm. and awkwardness and frustration, it's just, it's just almost impossible to to stay happy. Now that I've said all that, I I would be curious what you feel like is sort of the most important for cultivating either, you know, like your sense of purpose or some of your relationships. Yeah, I think Well, just kind of circling back to what you were talking about with relationships and connection and that, yeah, the quality of your relationships definitely makes the difference in your happiness. Um, I think it kind of relates to, and it kind of relates to our other important things of like self-awareness. If it's like all your relationships are bad, like every single one, that's a good opportunity to reflect on like, what am I doing that's contributing to these horrible relationships? Um, why is there this pattern going on? Versus like, yeah, like you said, occasional bouts of unhappiness or distress or strain on relationships is relatively normal. But if it's all the time with everyone, then that's really something to reflect upon. And I think that's something that I think can be cultivated and it kind of again goes back to mindset of whether or not you how you view your own accountability or responsibility in how you play in these in these roles meaning like if you're saying well everyone sucks and that's why I'm unhappy because everyone sucks versus like looking at your your own contributions to your ha- unhappiness you're you're going to go a lot further with that um I don't know if that's making any sense but (laughs) but um but going into purpose now uh where did I want to go with purpose 
I think that's also something that can be cultivated with time and practice and self-awareness and mindset. But I think it's it, one, it kind of circles back to taking accountability and, you know, deciding whether or not you're seeking it out and being purposeful in your purpose seeking, if that makes any sense. And that like some people just expect their purpose to magically like fall into their their mind and then they just know versus like doing activities to to investigate what m- that might be um exploring their options ex- hearing and talking to other people that may have commonalities with you um i think that might be a good way to cultivate and start purpose um what what are your thoughts yeah i'm, I'm roughly in the same boat which is I think if you're having a hard time connecting to something or really feeling a strong sense of purpose, Mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do is set your purpose as sort of exploration, right? To Mm -hmm. try new things, meet new people, those sorts of things. Because what I've seen most commonly is people feeling sort of like, oh, I don't know what to do with my life. I'm I'm not interested in anything. I have no passion, whatever else. Mm -hmm. And, And then they just stay in that spot. Um, yeah. And of course, that's more comfortable than sort of like trying new things and mm-hmm. exploring. But um, for some people, eventually they figure it out. But for a lot of people, it, it, it's a very painful path that takes a long time. Mm-hmm. So I think the earlier that you can sort of decide on, OK, I'm going to try these things mm-hmm. and just see how they land for me, the faster you can sort of sort out something um, mm-hmm. and typically some sort of purpose will arise as you are doing other activities, but it's far less common for purpose to arise from just sort of sitting and waiting for it to fall in your lap. Right. Exactly. And I think a person can have more than one purpose too. And purpose can change for a person. Like maybe their purpose is one thing for a while and then, you know, life happens and they realize maybe that's not my purpose anymore and they shift gears and that's perfectly okay too. And I think that's just part of the exploration of life. And I think if you have the mindset going back to mindset of like, it's an adventure, an exploratory adventure to figure out my purpose, um, that's going to go a lot a ways longer than if you were like, I need my purpose and I will not rest until I find my purpose. It's like, I think adding that pressure is probably going to make the process not as an enjoyable versus like an inquiry of like exploration. Yeah. I think that's a really good point because not having purpose or trying to find purpose or whatever else can weigh really heavily on certain people. And I've seen time and time again, people trying struggling and like really hoping to force themselves into feeling some sort of sense of purpose um and being frustrated when it doesn't really work i don't know if you've seen this before but like people who uh, i can't let's see what's a good way to phrase this they like jump head first into something mm-hmm. where because they think it's a thing that they should like it's like a social display more than an actual genuine um interest yeah. and then they find themselves like down the line mm-hmm feeling like a lot more hollow and empty because it was like, oh, I was doing this because I wanted to show that like, this is what I was interested in because I had some social value. Right. Um, And I just think like, you know, I guess for some people that could have eventually evolve into something more meaningful, but the more sort of consciously you can weed through your options, the the more likely are you, you are to land on something that is going to be meaningful for you and like you said it doesn't need to be this giant heavy thing like purpose can just be the next thing that you're interested in right it can it it can be that light it doesn't have to be sort of this like uh i have a i have a meaning that i'm set to do on earth like some people do feel that way and we could have some philosophical talk about like uh some of those ideas but um it doesn't have to be that way like you can keep it as light as just like i want to go do things that i'm interested in doing yeah definitely absolutely cool 
All right. Well, um, was there anything else that you wanted to elaborate on as far as our the things we picked for important happiness things? Yeah, just one one more thing to highlight. I think the things we've talked about are some of the most often most important things for yeah. most people. I'm going to say most as many times as I can. <laughs> but there is another uh, set of things that you can look at, which is if if you are feeling unhappy, um, looking at the things that are driving the most unhappiness for you, right? Like what we've said is is probably generically going to be true, but for individuals, you may get more mileage out of being a little more mindful about like what specifically applies to you and what's slowing you down or causing you problems. But if you're uncertain, these are for sure really good areas to start reflecting on to see if you can make some progress. Yeah, definitely can make the difference. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in this week. We appreciate you. And if you appreciate us, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and help spread the happiness in the world. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and then go and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. If you check out in the description below, go to my website where you can get my free fast and easy guide to stress relief. Thanks again for checking us out and we'll see you next time.